In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the two methods that are available to us for adding motors and sensors to our Robot Mesh Studio Mimic. Uh, the first method is to go directly into the devices library and grab the parts from there. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to click here on my library. I'm going to go down to devices. And here I can see that I have a VEX IQ smart motor, various sensors that work with the robot. And what I want to have happen here is I want to have this smart motor turn this smaller 12 tooth gear, which in turn will make the larger 36 tooth gear spin. So with my auto tool selected, I'm gonna grab the smart motor and pin it to the connector pins here at the top of this two by 12 beam. Now curiously, if I get really close, we can see that there's a tiny icon here that will allow me to flip the geometry. So if I click on this button, the smart motor will invert. So let's give this a click. And now we can see that the snap points in the smart motor are aligned with the connector pegs on the 2x12 beam. What I actually want to do here is I want to click on one of the snap points here, again with the auto tool selected. And I'm going to position this such that the hole on the sh for the shaft opening rather for the uh, smart motor is facing the shaft here on the other side of this beam. That might be a little hard to see at this point, so what I can do so I can click on this 2x12 beam, select the hide option. So it's going to render this piece of geometry invisible temporarily. And let's play with the positioning a little bit so that this shaft opening connects with the shaft that's controlling my 12 tooth gear. So I'm going to grab this um, snap point and let's move this over here. And then I'm just going to rotate the smart motor around this connector pin like so. Perfect. Okay, so with the shaft now coming into the shaft opening, my smart motor connected to the connector pins. Let's turn the show all uh, tool here. So it's gonna bring back my two by 12 beam. And if I wanna be certain that this is connected, what I can do is I can actually run the mimic uh, by clicking on the connect button over here. And if everything is connected, then what we should see is that this motor stays connected to the beam. If for whatever reason I've made an error, then what we'll see is that uh, the motor will fall. So let's click connect. And it turns out to be the case that everything is connected. So that's wonderful. I'm going to disconnect. Now, um, placing motors and sensors from the devices library is perfectly fine. And I'm a big fan of doing things that way. Um, the biggest issue here is that it's going to assign your motor or sensor to the first available port. So in this particular case, I had no other devices connected, so it threw my motor in port number one. Now the problem with this is that it's not very easy, I'd rather actually say impossible at this point, to reassign my motor to a different port. So if, for example, I wanted this motor to be on port number six, that's going to be very hard to do. In fact, if I click on the setup um, button over here, we're going to see that there's actually no way for me to reassign this motor. So if I want to have a motor or sensor mapped to a specific port on the VEX IQ brain, I'm going to have to do, a, do this a different way. And so let's get rid of this motor and hit delete. And let's show you what method number two looks like. So um, let's say that I want this to be on port number six. I'm going to come over here to the setup icon, give this gear a click. And it's going to ask me, what is it that I want to connect to port number six? And it gives me a bunch of choices. What I'm interested in here is the VEX IQ motor, so I'll select that. You can see that it presents me the opportunity here to rename the motor. So perhaps motor underscore six isn't a very descriptive name. What I could do instead is I could call this main motor. So main underscore motor. However you choose to spell that, it's up to you. I'm going to hit OK. And what it does is I have a, a motor now on port number six, but it's placed the motor here in the center of the base plate, which isn't so advantageous uh, for what we want to do. So again, I'm going to make sure that I've auto selected. I'm going to grab one of the snap points here on the motor. And I'm going to try and lift this motor so that it connects to one of the connector pins here on the two by 12 beam. So let's just pull this up. Again, my motor is not facing the right direction. The shaft is opening up on the wrong side of my two by 12 beam. So if I come closer, 
again, we should, when I have this selected, we should see a little tiny icon here that's going to let me flip the geometry. So let's give this a click. And let's see where my shaft opening is on my motor. So we want the shaft to come out down here to the, have the shaft connect with the shaft opening up here on the VEX IQ um, motor. So let's change this up a little bit. Again, I'm going to hide the 2x12 beam temporarily just to allow me to see the motor. And let's grab one of these snap points here and pin this to one of the um, connector pegs. So with the uh, VEX IQ motor mounted, I'm going to give this a spin so it's rotated. Oops, gone a little too far. And that looks like it fits pretty well. So let's unhide the 2x12 beam. I'm going to click show all. And again, we're going to test this out. Let's click the connect button, run the mimic, make sure that everything is fastened securely and that nothing is falling. So let's click connect. Looks pretty good. And now I have a motor on port number six uh, that I can control from the device monitor. So again, to control the motor, make it spin forwards or in reverse, I'm just going to click connect. And I'm going to move this slider one way or the other. And we can see that when I do that, the motor spins very quickly in one direction. If I let it sit here in the middle, it's going to be in neutral, so the motor is not going to spin at all. And again, if I move it in the opposite direction, the motor spins very quickly the other way around. There's still one other way that we could control this motor. So far, I've been controlling this motor manually from the device monitor. Let's disconnect and talk briefly about how we could run a very small program to control our Mimic. We can do that from the Blockly tab. So recall that when I was creating this project in previous videos, I specified my programming language of choice as Blockly. So I'm going to click on the Blockly tab here and we'll get into Blockly programming more in depth in future videos. But for now, it's enough to know that I can go into the motors library of Blockly grab a block so this top block is going to be fine for us snap it to my start block we see the little hazard sign here it's telling us that we haven't specified a motor to use recall that I have a main motor on port number six so I'm going to grab this from the pull down menu choose main motor let's have the motor spin forward let's say at a speed of 50 so we can see what's happening it's going to move in a distance of 2,000 millimeters or 200 centimeters and then it's going to break. We can change this to true. Now to see both my code and the mimic uh, concurrently, what I can do here is I can pin the mimic tab. So I come up here and click this arrow and now I can see both. And to run my code in the mimic, what I will do is rather than coming into the device monitor and clicking the connect button, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to come up here to the toolbar and press the big play button. Let's see what happens. So I hit play and we can see that the motor is going to spin until it has detected that it has moved a distance of roughly 2000 millimeters or 200 centimeters. And we can see that it stops. Again, if we want to change this up a little bit, I can make this spin now in the other direction and I can play with the distance value. Let's make it 5000 this time and hit the run button. And now we can see that the motor is spinning in the opposite direction. So those are the two methods that we can use for um, adding motors and sensors to our VEX IQ Mimic. The first method is I can go directly into the devices library, find the part I want and add it. Uh, the problem with that is that I can't reassign my port. So whatever the first available port is, that's what it's going to give me. In this particular case, it was assigning my smart motor to port number one. The second and I'd argue pref more preferable way of doing this is to go directly into the device monitor, click one of these um, uh, setup icons here, choose your port, so in this case port number four, tell the device monitor what it is you want to hook up, and then worry about placing the geometry within the Mimic later. So in this case I added a bumper sensor and it's placed it here at the bottom of the screen. I'll just undo that. Okay. Okay, so there you have it for adding motors and sensors and controlling them both autonomously and manually from the device monitor.